Well, sometimes having a fishing television show isn't all it's cracked up to be. Now, I promise I'm not yoking. This guy, he's all white. And the worms I need today to go and catch my black brim live where this guy forages. So let's go and have a look. So my first tip to worming in the chook shed is to get the chooks out of the shed before you start digging, because these guys here, they will beat you to the worm every single time. Come on, guys. Look what I've got for you. Woohoo! Out you go. There's one more. Come on, chookies. Beautiful. Just got to go through the scrap. Oh, there, look at that. As soon as you start moving that soil, look at them for some big fat worms. Now, that guy there looks like a scrubby. Believe it or not, there are 1,000 species of worms in Australia. 80 aren't even native, but they all do amazing things for our soil. Ooh, looks like a good one. Look at that. And another monster. They are seriously big worms. What a cracker bucket of worms we've collected. No Gippsland monster, believe it or not, less than 100 k from where I'm standing right now, they get earthworms that grow to three metres in length. Now, we've got plenty. It's important not to take too many from one area because they do do a lot for the soil and the plants. And it's always important to pay your taxes. Yeah, chook, 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 chook. <laughs> Well, my mum always said, if you don't ask, you won't know. So I've done the right thing. I've gone and knocked on a farmer's door and said, can I please have some access to your river? Maybe a little six pack to help with that. And I'm going fishing in a place that most other people probably can't access. Seriously, if you knock on a door, you never know what you might get. And you might even make a quality friendship that'll last a lifetime. so clear today, I can actually see the worms just wiggling around. And I reckon it's that wriggling that'll get the fish going. So what I'm actually doing here, I'm using my fins braid. It's 15 pound, 40 G. Now you might think 15 is very big for brim, but it's super, super thin. I'm actually using it as a bite indicator. So you can see that beautiful loop on the surface there. I'm actually watching that to see if I get a bite rather than feeling for a bite through the rod tip. There he goes. Gotcha. Oh, and he's straight up. That's a nice little brim. That's amazing. I think that's about the third or fourth time that he tried to eat that. And it's just about patience. And there we have our first southern black brim for the day. And look at that. The old worms from the chook pen done the job beautifully. And isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful fish? Now, that little gamma hook there, you'll see the whole plan is not to gut hook these fish. It's a circle hook. We're trying to hook them in the lip or the corner of the jaw. Whoops. And as you can see, they are feisty little things. Now that fish would probably be just under legal size in Victoria, but to just wander down, it is just pristine. Cast a worm. That is a beautiful thing. Off you go, my little friend. Aren't they beautiful, beautiful fish? Look at him go. There's just something special about brim and snapper. I don't know what it is. The amazing thing about the old brim, even though he's an estuary species, like so many other fish in this estuary, he doesn't need to leave the system to spawn, which is pretty cool. Yep, there he goes. Come on, come on, come on. Yep, gotcha. Oh, how good's that? And the braid is so handy because you can physically see what the fish is doing and they fight so hard. I just love that flash. And this system is just alive with brim. He's a nice fish, that one. Just alive. Come on, mate, just a lift. And that is a beautiful black brim. Look at that guy there. Aren't they amazing fish? I was saying earlier, there's something about brim and snapper. They're so special. And these guys are much like snapper in that they're serial spawners. They don't just lay once 
they'll lay over a period of time and that way it gives the larvae the best chance of ultimate survival. Such pretty fish but full of spikes. These ones are the dorsal fin, particularly that anal spike. Absolutely nasty. So be careful with the old brim. This is so much fun, I cannot begin to tell you. You know they've still got a bit of go when your spotters get a wash. So when you're fishing in these shadows, it's very time sensitive. If there's a brim on that snag and he wants to eat, I reckon within 30 seconds, maybe even five, he's gonna eat it. So I'll give it no longer than a minute, then I'll just move to the next snag, because seriously, there's enough snags on this river to keep me going for weeks. So this is probably gonna end in tears, but you gotta give it a go. My chance of getting a fish out here about one in 50, but it's gonna be fun. Oh, yep, here we go, here we go. Good luck, Foley. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, I'm just gonna have to pull against the snag. <laughs> and I got him, yes. I am very, very lucky that's only a smallish sort of fish. Because if you see what I pulled him out of, you'll know why I'm pretty impressed. You'd be happy to know that I'm very far from perfect. Magnificent cast, and all I caught was a tea tree. So it's time to re-rig, and I'm gonna show you a simple way to tie braid to mono. So this is called a back-to-back -back uni. Braid, mono. Lay the two across each other. And it's actually pretty simple. All you do is make a giant loop, almost like a granny knot, and then run your braid through that loop about five times. Sorry about the band-aid. I was out catching big flathead and whiting in Port Phillip Bay yesterday, and he smacked me up. But it's all good. So through about three or four times. Once you've done that, that tag comes through. I literally just pull that up fairly tight because the braid locks on nicely. Then you do exactly the same thing with the mono. Big loop, and then through that loop, probably about four times with the mono. One, two, three, four. So I've just gone around each bit of line. I pull that up a little bit until she's tight. And then literally just slide the two together and you'll see they lock on each other, cut those tags off, and she's good to go. It's a great knot. If you want to see more incredible knots, hit up our YouTube channel. There's some absolute crackers. Got that now, yep, he's got that now. And got him, he was just playing with that. Oh, it's a nice fish too. Now, I selected this outfit today, especially for these brims, it's not too long. Little Raider 662 Ultralight, one to three kilo. Stratic 3000, so I can get a good quick wind away from the snags. And that is the result. Even in the middle of the day, these fish are still biting very, very well. Not the monsters we're looking for, but the thing with brim fishing, you gotta get through the little ones to find the big ones. Such beautiful, beautiful little fish. Here we go, just gonna touch up there. Slowly taking it, I just wanna let him take it. Yep, got him. Oh, feels, oh, very nice. Oh, actually looks like a good fish. And I've gone to the mono just for a bit of a change up and it's a lot of fun. And this guy just got sucked in. I put the worm right at the edge of the shadow and that is a very, very nice brim. Use the length of the rod just to hold him away. And that is starting to get a little bit more serious. That is what we call in the industry a dead set keeper. Oh, and look at that. Look at all that stuff coming out the rear end there. That brim is actually spawning. He's doing the good stuff to help with the ladies, and basically Broom will spawn over a period of time. So this is a male, he's spawning at the moment, I'll get him back as quick as I can, but it's so good to see and it makes sense while this system is so alive so well, and there's so many beautiful fish in it. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, oh, he's got me in a snag. Oh, got him out, got him out. Oh, it's a nice fish. And I actually saw other fish jumping around as I set the hooks. There's a few fish in this hole. That probably took 30 seconds. He's a bit of a fatty. Oh no. Oh no, I need a longer rod. I'm snagged. I'm snagged. 
got it. That would have hurt if you, oh, that's a big fatty. That would have hurt if we got snagged out of the water. Look at the size of this thing. That's starting to get a bit up there and I wouldn't be surprised if that was a girl carrying a few eggs because it is one fat brim. It's such an amazing fishery this, this morning. Put the rod in, bang, bang, bang. Then we found in the heat of the day when the sun was in the air, we struggled to get a fish. So we sat in a tree, had some lunch, a nice cold drink, whoops. And now, all of a sudden, because we got the sun down about three o'clock, we've got more shadows, which means we've got more fish. And this is just unbelievable, blowing my mind. Simple, keep it simple, stupid. And you catch the beautiful brim. Just saw a little doop on the line as this had a little bite. Now, things would go pear shaped very quickly here, but I always say more rods increase the odds. Well, there we go, there we go. Oh, yes. I just saw another fish shoot off then again. That's amazing. They must be schooling. This fish feels a bit better, eh? Look at that. And this is ridiculous. It is literally happening. Oh, so easily. That's a better fish again. And what's amazing about this fish, he's actually got, I'm just gonna be very careful here, they are spiky fish, the old brimbo. He's actually got a totally different coloration to the others I've been catching. He's more of a silver brim. And I would suggest he has swum out of the bay recently, come off the sand and in the estuary system. These other fish that have been darker, they've also been living up in this tannin stained water. Every time you catch another fish, it tells you another story. Targeting these black brim today, I'm using a Gamma Katsu size six octopus circle hook. The reason for the circle, much greater chance of hooking the fish in the lip or the corner of the jaw, which gives them the best chance of survival if I choose to let them go. I can see it and wind and got him. Oh, they feel so different on mono. To, oh, and he's just fallen off. I was just gonna say they feel so different on mono compared to braid. That was amazing, but I think I might go back to the braid because I just like to be able to see it and make such a difference. The fish are playing a little bit of hardball, but in saying that, I've probably caught 10 already and I haven't had to work too hard to get them, so I reckon it's a pretty good place. How good does the Australian bush sound? Those birds, animals, just noises you don't hear or don't take the time to listen to in a built up environment. And if the last 12 months has taught me anything, it's that I want to travel more and see more of our great country. I love it so much, just getting out, putting the van on, hook the boat up and off you go. But there are some amazing places overseas as well. And Christy Jett and myself love this tiny little speck in the middle of the Pacific called Atataki in the Cook Islands. We go there as often as we can. We haven't been able to travel there for over 12 months, but last Christmas we had another incredible trip there, catching monster giant trevally, beautiful bonefish, and spending time with incredible people. I think I've been lucky enough to go there four or five times. I've gone back with some beautiful friends, and when things get a little bit back to normal, you'll see three people on the beach that look a little bit like me, Christian Jet. I mean, I love catching brim in a stream. I love all sorts of fishing, but that place there just holds a very, very special place in our heart. There he is, there he is, got him. Oh. Now I got him then, just by slowly moving it through the water column. And as I took it away, he just had to have it. That was amazing. Oh. They're beautiful fish today. We just haven't found the monster yet, but it'll come, it will come. Just admiring a beautiful little bird. And I got disturbed by another beautiful brim. Oh, they are so thick, it is just ridiculous. Yep, yep. Swimming upstream. Hopefully, he's a better fish. Oh. No, 
Não mais fez. That is a bit better fish. Look at that, for an absolute cracker. Now there's fish in this system to over a kilo. My friend Tommy Hughes caught a fish in this system that literally blew people away and almost broke the internet. And that's when I realized just how much people love brim. I'm gonna keep trying, because I know that fish is still in here.